Hey ho everyone, Soden here. I wanted to make a video for you guys today to show you how to fix a common problem with an old Atari ST520. I've had this one sitting in my closet for over a decade and it just wouldn't want to boot. Here's some old footage showing you the problem that I had with it. Ooh. Ooh, that's ugly. You can kind of tell that it's kind of flickering there. But yeah, yeah, that does not look good. I'll uh, hit the reset button. No, I'm still doing that crap. I did some searching online and called a couple of repair shops. They gave me a couple of ideas and one actually worked. So I'm going to show you today how to fix a common problem with an old Atari ST520 to get it up and running again. Here are the tools that you'll need. A normal Phillips head screwdriver, a bowl or something to keep your screws in, a very small Allen wrench, a napkin, a bottle of pure alcohol, and some cotton swabs. And I will also mention that this is a solderless solution. Let's get into tearing this thing apart. So what we need to do first is we need to get this top frame off. And if we turn the Atari over, there are six screws here that need to be unscrewed. Keep these in the jar over there. And the top frame comes right off. You see that the keyboard is detached, but you can just lift that and move that over off to the side. And you see that we have this metal frame here. There's three screws here that we use to, we need to get off. And we gotta take this uh, metal frame and just kind of move it aside. It's kind of, it's kind of between this, this uh, keyboard cable here. We can detach it from the motherboard, but we don't really need to do that. And just kind of slowly, gently move that to the side. And then you have our motherboard. Most repair shops fix these by replacing the shells with working motherboards. But since mine has some modded memory in it, that was completely out of the question. But here lies our problem. These two chips are GLUE and MMU chips. Sometimes when moving the machine around, these two chips tend to wiggle their way out of their sockets. It was a main problem with the 520s that was corrected with the 1040s and beyond. Some people have told me about a drop solution. It's where you pick up an ST from about four inches off the ground and you drop it. it they say that it wiggles these chips back into the sockets without having to open it up. But that sounds dangerous to me, which is why I'm making this video. Let me show you what we can do with these chips. Now we need to pop these two chips and clean the pins with some alcohol. We're going to do this using this Allen wrench here. And I say again, get the smallest one that you can find. It took me a couple of tries before I was able to find this sucker. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it down through this slot here. We're going to slowly push it underneath and kind of pop the chip out like that. And then we're going to put it on the other end and then we'll slowly pop it out just like that. And then we grab it with our fingers on the sides and we put it on the napkin. Now you're going to want to do the same thing with the other chip. You just want to slowly pop it out. Do that with the other. And there it is. It's free. And then you can grab it by the sides 
and then put it on your napkin. And again, you want to be sure which one you put where because you don't want to mix up these chips. Then you need to apply some alcohol to the pins inside the socket. Just dab a little alcohol here and let's get to work on these pins. Slowly apply the alcohol by moving from pin to pin and do this for both of them. Now keep an eye on your swabs. When you see that it's dirty, change it from side to side and you can do this about four times. Do that until the swab is dirty, then all you have to do is just throw it out and get a new one. And also, you'll need to give it about a minute and a half for the alcohol to settle in and to dry before we plan to reseat the chips back in. Now we want to put these chips back into their sockets. And we just got to align it just right without forcing it, without touching the pins on the sides, and just slowly push it back in. Up, oh, we got one corner, up, and come on. All right, got it. You made sure that is good and snug. And then we do that with our other chip, we just put it right in there, get it to where it feels like it fits, slowly push down, get it, let's see, here, up, 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 up. and there we go, get that in nice and snug. And now that we've got all the chips in and clean, we gotta put it back together. Now, metal frame down. And you gotta kinda, you kinda gotta work it. That metal frame, good and snug. We got three screws we gotta put in. Let's do that, shall we? And we got her all back together. Let's turn on the monitor. Let's pop in a disc. And awesome. Turned on like it was brand new. You see, the GLUE and the MMU chips are the most common problems with these 520s because these machines were made first. If you do this process and it still doesn't come up, then you might have some memory issues or other severe problems, which takes more knowledge than what I have. If you do this process and it still doesn't come up, go to atariforms.com. I'll put a link to it in the crouch bar below. There are plenty of people there that'll be able to help you out with your issues. Anyway, uh, that's uh, all I got. I hope this video helps you out. I sure wish this was around when I was trying to figure this out. Later.